Another 21 Americans flew out of Haiti, landing back on safe ground in Orlando, Florida on Saturday. It comes as the State Department has also evacuated more than 230 people so far to escape the spike in gang violence in Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince. David Culver has the story of what it takes to get people back on American soil. The challenge for U.S. citizens trying to leave Port-au-Prince begins as soon as they start driving to the U.S. Embassy. Getting there involves driving through either gang-controlled or gang-contested territories. It's dangerous and it's unpredictable. In armored vehicles, we saw that firsthand. And yet, this is the only way out for some. The airport is shut down and many feel trapped. In recent days, the U.S. Embassy began evacuating citizens who could make it to the embassy. Managing the safety of those evacuations is Regional Security Officer Steve Strickland. How does Haiti, how does Port-au-Prince today compare to your past 19 years? There's nothing like Port-au-Prince. The security situations here are nothing like anything I've experienced before. Um, I've spent time in Afghanistan, uh, Pakistan. Uh, Iraq, um, in Africa, and uh, the unique, uh, unique circumstances here, um, I have not seen a parallel to those in any other uh, security environment that I've served. Amid these challenges, there are some who fear Americans are being abandoned in this gang-filled war zone. The truth of the matter is, literally on a daily basis, there are phone calls that we're engaged with at the highest levels of the U.S. government, where the number one topic is safety and security. How do we help get our U.S. citizens uh, out, of, out of the country to a safe place. Launching these evacuation flights from the capital is a critical first step. Jenny Guillaume and her five-year-old son, Conrad, registered a few days ago. She's had to leave behind her mom and other loved ones so as to get back to their home in New York. Getting to the embassy is terrifying. It's a potentially deadly commute. Some who had confirmed their spots canceled last minute, either emotionally unable to leave behind loved ones or just unable to get to the embassy safely. So is there an option to go from here and go pick them up? Is that even a reality? It just really isn't, unfortunate. The, the security resources that we have are stretched so thin. The ability to, to do that um, is, is it's really a non-starter. We just don't have uh, that, that capacity to do it. We'd love to do it. It's just simply an impossibility, unfortunately. With some seats unclaimed at the last minute, our team, as U.S. citizens, is able to travel out with them and chronicle their journey. We board in gang-controlled territory on a patch of land that's secured and surrounded by a robust and reassuring American military presence. We take off for the Dominican Republic. There are a lot of mixed emotions for those who get out. Gratitude and relief for getting here safely, as well as guilt and fear for those still in Port-au-Prince. Knowing that what's happening on the other side of this border is getting worse with each passing hour. David Colbert, CNN, Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic.